it's Meredith Brown with Authors Ignite. I'm the co-founder and digital trainer and branding expert with Authors Ignite. And I'm going to be your digital trainer for today's Meredith Matchbox on how to be more creative in your writing. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I have my notes here. So if I look over, that's what I'm looking at. And let's go ahead and get started. So the first way that you can be creative with your writing, which is very important because you don't want it to feel stagnant and you don't want it to be stagnant. So the reason for that is you don't want to be bored with your writing because if you're bored, the reader is going to be bored, right? So the first thing that you can try is to choose different creative topics or themes to inject into your writing. So there's different ways to do that. Um, you could, for example, write about something that freaks you out, right? So you could write about, you know, uh, sharks, if you're afraid of sharks. Like maybe you saw Jaws in theaters and that just really freaks you out about sharks. So you could add a shark plot point to your story, which, you know, it adds passion to your storytelling because you're actually afraid of it and you're actually you know what you're talking about when you're talking about fear right so you could do sharks you could do um you know fear of heights maybe your protagonist has a fear of heights and they have to somehow get over that or they're challenged by that in the story um or if it's nonfiction. That you're writing you could write about a time that you had to get over your fear of heights or you were challenged by your fear of heights and you had to figure out a way around it um, another thing that you can do is to use an interesting setting um, you see this a lot with you know science fiction fantasy obviously but you also see it with your typical like cozy mystery or something like that where they'll go on vacation to somewhere that's different than just the normal town they're normally in and they use the setting to help um, drive the story and bring interest so maybe it's a tropical island or maybe they're going on like a safari or maybe you know you can get as creative as you would like um, maybe you can even visit some of these places and take notes on, you know, what you hear and what you smell and what you see just to make sure that you bring all five senses because that's so important to writing, we know. Um, and if you can't do that, then obviously do as much research as possible so that you can make it feel realistic. Um, okay, so another way that you can add creativity by choosing a interesting theme is to explore perhaps a hidden or forgotten moment in history. Now you can do this in a nonfiction sense or you can look to history as a way to get creative with your fiction writing. Um, a lot of fantasy authors do this as you may have noticed, for example, George R. R. Martin, hugely popular, uh, his Game of Thrones series you know, is is a largely inspired by historical events, things that actually happened or things that could happen. Yes, there are dragons also in his story, but, you know, there's warring political factions and kings and queens and all of that. So you can always look to history for ways to get creative in your writing. And also, you know, there's tons of interesting events in history that are untapped in writing or that are funny or that, you know, are super convoluted or different. And so you can tap into all of that and add it to your story, um, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. Another thing that you can do, and this is, we've seen this um, many a time, but it's to put a new spin on a classic theme. So whether that's being inspired maybe by Aesop's fables, for a children's story or something like, um, you know, 10 Things I Hate About You simply being a retelling of Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew. You can put a new spin on a classic theme. So you can be very um, creative, you know, even if the theme is something that has been done before, you can use that as your jumping off point and see if there's a new or different angle or way to look at it. So. For example, The Taming of the Shrew, right? That's going to be um, 
the typical theme of the the woman who doesn't want to be involved with a man and they updated it they changed it for uh the 90s or early 2000s and they made her super feminist she's going to sarah lawrence and all of this stuff so you know it's a classic theme of falling in love but they updated it and changed it for today and made it modern or you can um also like look at the theme in a darker or more cynical way it just depends on what fits to your story the best so another thing that you can do to add creativity is to do a writing challenge. This one is huge. Um, so I love writing challenges. Um, something that I used to do a lot is called a drabble, which is where you take three random words, however you pick them, and then you just write a hundred words using those three words. So it can be about anything, but you have to use those three words. Um, so that's one way to get more creative or you could do a writing challenge with other writers. Maybe they set the theme or they set the words and you use that as your jumping off point and you could, you know, challenge yourself by writing maybe 500 words a day of a scene or you could do just general free writing or journaling, which can help you get into the mindset of writing and help you um, get into that headspace like, okay, I'm writing now. I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop messing with my bangs, I promise. <laughs> um, I recommend doing at least one creative writing prompt a day if you are a full-time writer. That's just gonna help you get your creative juices flowing, maybe take you know, 20, 30 minutes and do a creative writing prompt and then get back to it. Or if you have a day job and you're not necessarily sitting down and writing for eight hours every day, uh, you could do a creative writing prompt whenever you have time. So once or twice a week, whenever you can fit it in. Um, another fun challenge is to maybe open up a book that's nearest to you or your favorite book and choose, you know, a random sentence in the book, make sure it's a juicy one and not just like, she said no. <laughs> um, and then use that as your jumping off point for your creative story. Okay, another method that you can use is to describe your characters with creativity. And we've all seen the sort of lurid purple prose version of this. That's not what I'm talking about. I don't want you to do, you know, the um, raven colored orbs or whatever to describe eyes. What I'm talking about is to make your character's backstory distinct. Um, human beings, even the most normal white bread milk toast human being is gonna have something interesting in their, in their life, right? That has happened. So an interesting backstory just helps uh, ground the character and make them more interesting and it allows you to flex your creative uh, flex your creative muscles, I suppose. Um, so characters with super detailed backstories often come across as more well developed and more distinct. So you know, people love a creative backstory. You obviously don't want to dump it all in the beginning. We know how to add in a backstory throughout the story, right? So a really good example of that would be um, maybe, you know, your character was orphaned at a young age and they've had to, like if you're doing a fantasy novel, for example, they were orphaned at a young age and they've had to, you know, figure out how to live on the streets and you know, do what they had to to get by. That would be a great backstory and it would give them a lot of unique characteristics that you could then use in your story. Another thing that you can do is to give your characters a unique uh, physical marker or action that is specific to them and no one else. So obviously you want your character to be unique and distinct and different from everyone else. You know, you don't want a 
really general description of your character. So a good way to do that, for example, Harry Potter, right? He had the lightning shaped scar on his forehead. Not only was it a physical characteristic that marked him as the chosen one, he was Harry Potter, but it also fed into his backstory. So that's a really good way to do that, like a scar or a freckle. Um, my favorite series, the Cushiel series by Jacqueline Carey, the main character has a scarlet, a red um, freckle in her eye. She has otherwise brown eyes, but she has a red freckle in her eye and that denotes her as different. That marks her as one of the chosen ones of um, one of the gods in the story. So that is something that you can do. Um, another creative thing, if you would like, is to have your characters use a sort of specialized language. Now, <laughs> I'm not saying you have to go so far as like Tolkien and make up Elvish, but if you want to, like that would be really cool. But what I'm saying is having your characters use words that are unique to them. Um, maybe your character grew up in a bilingual household and so they will sometimes use different words like, you know, you want to be really careful with this because there is a certain way that people who are bilingual speak. Like, for example, Spanish and English. There's a really distinct way to speak Spanglish when you, like, forget certain words in English or you forget certain words in Spanish and you use the equivalent in the other language. So you want to make sure, you know, that you follow the rules of language with that, but that is something that you can do. Um, you definitely want to make sure that if you use a language, you yourself are either fluent in it or you have an editor or a friend or somebody who is fluent who can tell you like what's up, right? Like whether you sound correct or whether you sound crazy. <laughs> Uh, another thing you can do is to give your main character, your protagonist, a unique narrative voice. So essentially what that means is you would have your character be unique or distinct on the page by giving them a different way of describing things, right? Like maybe they use certain words a lot. Um, maybe they use a certain type of slang, you know, maybe if they are British, they speak like in a Cockney slang accent in their head. But then when they're in public, they kind of use like a proper British accent because they're trying to seem a certain way. That could be really interesting. Another method for getting creative with your writing is getting creative with your word choice and descriptions. And we all know the golden rule of writing, right? Is no cliches, avoid cliches, you guys. Unless it's like your character uses a certain cliche over and over because that's like their catchphrase. Maybe you could do that, but I would suggest you know, avoiding cliches altogether. And essentially a cliche is just a saying that has been used so often it's basically lost all meaning. So, you know, writer or writers, well, writers as well, but readers will be generally unimpressed if you use a cliche that they already know. They want like a new and unique way of describing things, right? So it can be hard to avoid using cliches because we use them all the time in normal speech and you know they're common that's why they're a cliche so a good thing to do would be to look up a list of cliches online and just try to avoid using those in your writing that's what i would suggest um another thing you can do within that realm is to use metaphor simile things like that that are different things that haven't been used before so um, again, you don't want it to be cliche, but you don't want it to be super odd either. Um, there is, you know, the, <laughs> I would say stereotype of you're reading a book and you can tell the author just went and picked up a thesaurus and tried to use a certain word, you know, 
to replace a basic word. And you don't want to do something like that with your metaphor or your simile. Um, you could say, you know, what's a good example? <laughs> um, if you're describing your main character, your protagonist, right? And she's very brave and courageous and fierce. You could describe her as like a tiger or a lion or something like that. That's not too cliche and it's a good um, simile or metaphor that would help your reader remember that about your main character. Also, um, I don't want to say that thesauruses, thesauri, uh, I don't want to say not to use a thesaurus at all. It can be okay to use a thesaurus. I'm not saying you shouldn't ever. Um, you know, you want to use more descriptive words than your general everyday words, but you don't want to use words that the reader is going to have to pull out a dictionary. Like, they don't know what it means. So if you're trying to say something is very good, you don't want to say it's very good, right? That's kind of boring and doesn't really explain. So you could say um, the fireworks show was fantastic, right? The fireworks show was amazing. So those are some different like thesaurus words that aren't very good, the actual term very good, but that you could use in place of it without confusing the reader. Also creating um, unique imagery is really helpful. So using, again, the five senses. If you can tell your reader how it smells in a room. Maybe there's like a, a candle lit and so it smells like grandma's cookies every time you walk into a certain room, right? Um, the lighting, how it looks, how it sounds. Maybe there's background music if they're in a public place. Um, all of those things. So you're not necessarily going to go up and lick the wallpaper unless you're writing Willy Wonka, but you know, you can include all of these different senses in your writing to help ground the reader and ground the story and just give it more uniqueness because if they're just in a blank white room, that doesn't mean anything, right? But if there's a lamp in the corner with a warm yellow glow and when they walk in the candle is lit and it smells like papaya, that's unique. So just keep that in mind. Um, another thing you can do is, this one's super fun and I love doing this, um, which is playing with the way words sound as the reader is reading. So like when you're reading a book, you're hearing the words in your head or you're reading it aloud and the words will sound different. So you can consider maybe using repetition in your words, using alliteration or assonance in your words. Um, so for example, a really good one is the slithering snake hissed, right? So using those, that sounds really fun. Um, or using a hard k -k sound. You know, uh, maybe the character has a cat who is a bad cat, right? And so they said the crazy cat crouched and leapt and sunk their claws into my ankle, right? So it's a lot of k -k -k sound. Um, another way you can use language in a fun way is to use onomatopoeia. Uh, if you guys aren't sure what that means, it's basically when the word describes the sound or action. So it's words that, um, what's a good example? Like her high heels clicked down the hallway, click, click, click. That would be onomatopoeia. Or the skateboard whizz, whizzed by, you know? Uh, the fireworks bang in the distance, something like that. And that makes it creative. So method number four for sparking your creativity um, has nothing to do with writing at all. And this is my last couple of suggestions. So these are things you can do to help spark your creativity when you're not sitting in front of a blank screen freaking out, okay? Um, and we all have heard the, you know, the adage or the, you know, Thing that happens, it always happens, right? 
the thing that always happens, you're in the shower, you're washing your hair, and you come up with a new story idea or you solve a problem in your story, right? Because you're not thinking about it. So one thing you can do is listen to music that is different. Maybe you can create a playlist for your character. I've seen a lot of authors do this. And it's fun because not only can you get into the mindset of your character through this playlist, but you can then share it with your readers so they can kind of know a little bit more about your character as well. And you can also pull that music into your story if you would like to. Um, if you're writing fantasy, then, you know, you can still create a playlist for your character. You can still share it with the readers, but you may not pull it into the story in the same way as you would for, you know, a cozy mystery where her favorite song is uh, Moonlight Sonata or something, right? So you can listen to this music, have it playing while you write, or you can have music playing that uh, influences the way you write. So for example, I write a lot of more scary, action-driven horror stories. So something that I might do when I'm writing a particularly um, gory fight scene is play like metal music in the background to get me like in that mindset of like, everything is frantic and everything is important and we're gonna die and oh my gosh, we have to protect ourselves. So playing some kind of frantic metal music or um, also that one song, uh, that classical music song with the bees. That would be a really good song to play while you're writing a fight scene because it's also very frantic. Um, another thing you can do that I always recommend that you guys do no matter what is meditation and breathing exercises. Um, we have a video on our Authors Ignite YouTube teaching you guys how to do the 478 breathing, which helps calm anxiety. But also, if you're calm, you can access your creativity more readily. So that is something that you can do um, just to help you write and be more creative in your writing. So definitely make sure that you do it while sitting down, but go check that video out if you want to see how to do it. And I find it very helpful. Um, another thing that you could do meditation wise, especially if you're writing a scene that is set in our world, you're not a fantasy author necessarily, you can go outside, you know, take in some nature, add that to your scene, but also let it kind of infiltrate your brain and get your creative juices flowing because you'll be literally hearing and seeing nature around you. So you can take some notes on what you hear and what you see. And then the last thing that we always recommend that you guys do, and this is the importance of having a good schedule, uh, <laughs> office hours, we've talked about this, but getting enough sleep. As long as you follow your schedule, stick to your office hours, and make sure that you're getting enough rest, you're having enough play time with your family. That's hugely important because if you're super stressed out and you haven't gotten enough sleep, you literally cannot be creative. Your brain won't let you because it's in fight or flight mode, right? It's in I'm ready to fall asleep mode. So make sure you get enough sleep always. And I hope you enjoyed these tips. I will be back uh, next month for Meredith's Matchbox, but I hope you enjoyed the July Meredith's Matchbox and how to be more creative in your writing. And if you use any of these ideas, please let us know in our Facebook page, in our Facebook group, um, or you could just send us a message if you would like letting us know you used them. And I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.